Welcome to God Seeker. This is Elizabeth Fulgaro. The current message, Seeking God. Here we are again, considering one of those phrases you'll hear in Christian circles, which does speak to one of God's important promises, but can seem vague when you first hear the language. It goes roughly like this. Seek God and he will be found by you. But what does this mean anyway? And to what is it relevant? As with many phrases used by Christians with frequency, the exhortation to seek God is based on verses in the Bible. One of the sections often referred to is in the book of Jeremiah found in the Old Testament. Jeremiah was a prophet of God who lived about 600 years before the birth of Jesus. He was a Jew whom God called to serve him by delivering his message to the Jewish population in Judah before they were overrun by Babylon and taken into captivity. Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 13, expresses part of the message God had for Jeremiah to deliver to the Jews in Judah at that time. For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace, and not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. Then you will call upon me, and you will come and pray to me, and I will hear and heed you. Then you will seek me, inquire for and require me as a vital necessity, and find me when you search for me with all your heart. What an encouraging message that God had specific plans for his people and that these plans were for good and not evil. Furthermore, if people called upon God and prayed to him in earnestness, God would hear these prayers and answer. In addition, and pertinent to the current message, God would let himself be found by those who sought him with their whole hearts. This meant those who made getting to know God better their top priority, not because they had to, but because they wanted to. Christians believe that God's Spirit caused the Bible to be written through the hands of multiple writers over generations of time. This is one reason it is called the Word of God. It is God's message, His words. All the pieces of it combined together are understood as His Word. Christians search the Bible to learn what God says about himself through his writers. One of the characteristics of God which pops up in a few parts of the Bible's overall message is that God is unchanging. Thus, what he promised the first listeners and how he was recorded to be with them illustrates what we can expect from God, too. This means, though we have to be careful to look at the context surrounding Bible verses, so as not to grossly misapply them. How God spoke to his original readers still contains a message for us today. God still has plans for each one of us. There are additional scripture which describe how he knew us before we were born and how he cares for us in such a way that he knows every hair on our heads. And not to worry, because he's handling the things which generally consume our thoughts but to seek him first. Initially, the idea to search for a God you cannot see with your eyes or meet face to face can seem difficult to comprehend. How is such an invisible and thus seemingly elusive being to be found, especially when he is spiritual and supernatural or rather beyond what you can grasp in the ways to which you were accustomed? The primary prerequisite to searching for God is to be interested enough to make it a priority to try to get to know him. Obviously, you are not literally looking up and down streets and in physical buildings to find him. You are inquiring mentally, with an objective to connect with him spiritually. Of course, the spiritual realm is not the same as the physical. But even though before we get close to God, we tend to focus our attention almost exclusively on the physical realm, this physical realm, which we are tempted to think is everything, 
cannot, in fact, be separated from the spiritual. The physical realm is infused with the spiritual, though many of us have been taught to live as if the spiritual did not exist. God's Word explains that the spiritual existed first, and that everything physical came to be via the spiritual. Well, if God is Creator, then this makes sense. To search for God is to confront and move through the idea that reality is more than can be sensed with five natural physical senses. To dare to call out mentally to God in your thoughts and maybe even sometimes to vocalize these because you are hoping and even expecting this being to hear you, an as yet unknown entity who promises to be there with you and for you, but whom you cannot touch in the regular way. As you seek him, you become aware of different aspects of him. There is even supernatural encounter. With every experiential and knowledge discovery of more different aspects of him, an awareness heightens. This triune God, who is inexplicably three separate persons in one, the Father, His Son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, is not to be completely comprehended or apprehended. He is God. By definition, this means He does not fit into momentarily convenient human-constructed mental containers. He is beyond everything you can imagine. Yet he is also loving, perfect parent and longs for deepening relationship with you. He created you to have fellowship with him, to spend time together with you. So we hold on to these two opposite concepts simultaneously, for they are both true. God is to be sought and found. He will help you find him when you seek, but he is never to be fully known or understood. But you seek anyway. And honestly, isn't the fact that he cannot be fully grasped also a comfort? It means you get to be the child who is taken care of and spiritually well-fed by this supernatural supreme parent. Every moment of your life, You get to rely on his own perfection instead of trying to depend on your own fallibility. This is blessed. The song All About You is a joyful burst of commitment to seek God and let him have your life because you are beginning to know who he is. Listen once. Listen twice. Let the melody wash over you multiple times and see if the words are a prayer which fits where you are right now. You can find the song All About You on my YouTube channel, various streaming services, or on CD. Let's finish with a few verses from the Bible. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 through 11. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow come down from the heavens and return not there again, but water the earth and make it bring forth and sprout, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, without producing any effect useless. But it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Thank you for joining in. This message was brought to you by Eagles Nest Foundation. Until next time, this is Elizabeth Fulgaro. I am praying for you. Listen to the song All About You and keep seeking God.